I'm Carrie Selda. We're here at the Denver Film Festival, and I'm speaking with Nathan Ward and Carl Rust from the film Rider and the Wolf. Nathan, let me start with you. In the process of making the film, is there anything different or new you took away that you didn't know about the sport? Colorado is one of the origins of the sport of mountain biking. You know, so I think meeting some of those people and realizing it was a much bigger circle of cyclists than we thought originally. And your brother Mike was a huge part of that circle of cyclists. What did you think when Nathan approached the family and said, we'd like to make a film about your brother? At first we were cynical. We thought, huh? Why would somebody do that? You know, what what brought this on? Um, so yeah, I was a little skeptical at first. Uh, because you didn't, you guys didn't regard him as sort of a large figure in the mountain biking world, or what? What was it you were skeptical of? Well, it was just having somebody come and say, "I want to do a movie about your brother." I mean, that's kind of how often does that happen? So yeah, it was it was a bit strange. But uh, once we met with Nathan and said, "Hey, this this is okay. We can deal with this." <laughs> He could see the way America was going. He thought America was getting lazy, and he really liked to fight back with the bicycle. From a technical standpoint, one of the things that really brought me into the film was the person you used for the voiceover. Who, who is that? That voice is amazing. Uh, the voiceover is a, a Colorado actor named Curtis Emery, and he's also a world champion burrow racer. Yeah, so he's worked in quite a few films out all over the U.S., yeah. And won the World Championship burrow racing three or four times. Who knew that that was a sport one could win that in? Okay. <laughs> uh, for you, was it was it difficult at times, given that, you know, Mike hasn't been found yet, to, to sort of relive that part of your life? It, it is. In fact, uh, every time I see the film, um, it sort of brings some of that back almost every time. Um, you get, you know, not sure how people are going to react to it. Um, and, or even the questions they're going to ask afterwards. So, yeah, there's a certain emotional take to it every time. For me, it was great to watch because uh, my dad and my uncle have retrofitted bikes. Like, they put skis on the front of bicycles mm. and things like that to, to see how people were so creative and tinkered with the bikes and the different things that they did was really inspirational. Have you found people coming to you and saying, like, hey, I've done this with a mountain bike. You need to check it out. We have, and... One of the cool things is that people still have Mike Rust bikes and they're still riding them today. You know, almost everyone we interviewed in this film had this amazing garage full, not of like fancy cars, but of like, you know, 50 classic mountain bikes, you know. And, you know, when we when we uh, were doing some of the research of the film in Crystal Butte, we'd go around town and try to find old bikes that were still there from 40 years before. So, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a fanatical culture. What is it about filmmaking that that you connect with as a form of artistic expression? Well, I was a print journalist for 15 years beforehand, and I'd keep going to film festivals, you know, like the Denver Film Festival and others, and uh, just realize that, like, filmmaking was a much more powerful medium. And plus, you know, it changes. We could get it out all over the place, straight from my living room. So if the story's told right, it's, it's, it's passionate and beautiful, and it lives much longer than what I was doing before. So. This is certainly a beautiful film. Thanks for speaking with me.